We're approaching another solemn moment in the pandemic, the loss of 600,000 lives in America due to the coronavirus. In a new book, a former White House senior advisor for COVID response argues much of this disaster could have been prevented. Andy Slavitt left President Biden's COVID response team just last week after taking on the position in January. His new book offers an up-close look at the crisis and how leaders responded. It's called Preventable, the inside story of how leadership failures, politics, and selfishness doomed the U.S. coronavirus response. And Andy Slavitt joins us now. Andy, good morning to you. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, you know, I, I had a complicated question to start with, but my co-host this morning, Adriana Diaz, suggested a far simpler one. The book is called Preventable. How much of this pandemic was preventable and how? Well, of course, we would have had a, a pandemic here in the U.S. no matter what. Um, but, but, and look, we can count the, the, the mistakes, and I think it's important that we do it for nothing else so we don't repeat them. We obviously had a set of technical mistakes with the testing and, and the, the PPE that we know about. But if we're honest, we also had two, two other types of mistakes that caused a lot of loss of life. One were just plainly political leadership mistakes. Um, there was a lot, we denied the virus for too long out of the Trump White House. We, there was too much squashing of dissent and playing on divisions. But I'd also think we all need to look at one another and ask ourselves, um, what do we need to do better next time? And in many respects, being able to sacrifice a little bit for one another um, to get through this and to save more lives is going to be, it's going to be essential. And that's something that I think we could all have done a little bit better on. So when we look in the mirror and evaluate our own role in all this, the public, how we could have sacrificed more, as you say, and we think about the possibility of a difficult fall or winter or a difficult variant, what more needs to be done now to prepare ourselves as a public, putting aside the government and, and the scientific part of this, for us as the public, what's the message? Well, there's a couple simple things. One is that, that all the people that for so long live so close to the edge, that don't have a great safety net, that don't have great uh, health insurance, uh, but they're forced to work day in and day out to serve us. They're growing crops, they're delivering food to our warehouses, they're, they're, they're working in grocery stores, they're delivering food to our door. All those people are at risk all the time. And, and, and so we have to, we, there's a chapter in the book called The Room Service Pandemic, and it talks about how a lot of us had, had it quite okay during the pandemic and others didn't. So we should be looking at that. And then look, preventing the spread of the disease is really about a couple simple things. Not breathing near one another in large spaces. That's really, that's really it, if you want to be overly simple about it. And that requires a certain amount of sacrifice and change. It's a short period of time, and we, we, none of us can do it forever, and it's not pleasant. But, but when we do, um, we reduce the amount of spread pretty dramatically. And if the variants come back in the fall, as, as, as they will, the people who are unvaccinated really are going to need to pay serious attention to that and consider getting vaccinated because we have some great vaccines on the market. So, Andy, in terms of what may happen in the future, do you think that we are ready for another pandemic, which inevitably is going to come and affect us? I don't think we are, and I don't think we are for a couple reasons. Um, one is, I think um, we need to have a dialogue in this country about, about what matters. Is it more important for us to have our individual liberties, that we don't wear a mask, or should, is there some common good that we should all be, be working towards? I think we'll do a better job technically. I think we will, we will put the money into public health that we need. I think we'll have woken up a little bit. I also think our experience with the pandemic will hopefully allow us to respond better. But a divided country, with leaders that play against our greatest fears, which divide us, and if they didn't, if we deny science, um, we're going to have trouble again. So hopefully, we'll learn some of those lessons. Do you? Uh, you mentioned uh, the vaccination rate. I mean, it's 64 percent of American adults uh, have had at least one shot. The hope is by the Biden administration we get to 70 percent by July 4th. Questionable whether we will get there, but there's still a lot of resistance to vaccinations. How important is it? Do you think that we we get this number up significantly higher? Well, look, I think there's a lot of us to whom taking a vaccine wasn't a very involved decision. We made it right away. We wanted to get vaccinated. We knew we did. There's a number, number of other people, and they're not necessarily anti-vaccine, but they just want more information and it takes a little bit more time. And so we have to, we have to respect that process, even if we're not going to vaccinate people as quickly as possible. I'm confident that, that over time we will begin to vaccinate those people. But we have to make sure is that they don't go to places like Facebook to get information about vaccines, but go to reliable sources. If you're not sure if you sh if you're, should get vaccinated, ask your doctor, ask your pharmacist, talk to people you know who've been vaccinated. Don't follow the mythology 
around vaccination because we have three great vaccines that people all around the world would love to have. It's causing great pain and suffering if you look across the world. We're lucky to have them. But if you need more information, get more information. We do have some great vaccines, Andy. We do also have the first and what will be, I'm sure, a shelf of books looking back uh, on what happened and why with this pandemic and how it could be different in the future. Yours is the first entry and a great one. Uh, Andy Slavitt, thank you very much. The book Preventable goes on sale tomorrow.